Okay, so let us begin with the topic of numerical inequalities that we were looking at, right? So more in numerical inequalities, more in We just begin with a question I had given last time and let's see what thought about it. Um, let's see. So if A, B, C and D, let's say these four are natural numbers, then there was this open-ended question that we're trying to think about. Then find condition, find a condition that find a condition that guarantees uh, a to the power b is bigger than um, also just give me one second, I will just uh, come back. Okay. Right, so we were looking for conditions for this, right? What should be the conditions that you can put? And we kind of simplified, we kind of came down to one simplified case, you can say, right? Where, um, uh, yeah, the C, you can put C equal to B and you can put D equal to A. If you put this, so let's put this, then what can you say? I mean, then first of all, if you move this, then it becomes uh, a to the power b, and this becomes b to the power a. Okay, so in this case, and let's just also assume, and that's fine, right? To assume a is bigger than b, then what can we say? Which one is bigger? Right. This was the question. So, yeah, compare, compare this, to, right? And here we know this, that um, we know we actually, I mean, we don't have not proved it, but we know that a to the power b is less than b to the power a, right? We had checked some examples and we were kind of convinced. Right. So you see, then we'll try to prove this today, but you see, this is one of the conditions, right? That in, if this is the case, okay. And A is bigger than B, A is bigger than B is not a, it's just not a, not a condition at all. I mean, it's just a, but in this case, right? Where C is equal to B and D equal to A, in the simple case, we can always say this, right? So today we are going to prove this, okay? So have you, have you thought of proving this? Have you tried to prove this? why should this be true now you could see this for all natural numbers right i mean you could put i'm insane i mean you can put some numbers and you can check that it is true but how to prove Right, examples like well, we can give some numbers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, you can take a equal to five and b equal to two. And then let's see, right? So it's clearly true, right? Because then it becomes five to the power two and that's less than two to the power five, clearly. So see, it's true, but how to prove, right? Is we need to describe a method so that, so that it doesn't depend. We need to give a reasoning that does not depend on A and B. We need to think of a reasoning that does not depend on A or B. I mean, on any particular number, I should say, right?
it's not becoming true, right? So for that, you, yeah, that's right. That's a good observation. In fact, you will need to be sure you will need B to be bigger than three, bigger than equal to three. That's a very good observation that it is not true for very small, like one of the number, one of the numbers is very small. Right, that's, that's, that's a good observation. Yeah. How could we prove something like this? See, this is the dilemma. Right? Last time we saw some techniques like taking square roots or taking some certain kind of roots, raising both sides to certain power. Can we use those techniques? How can we use? demonstrate this like if i if i ask you something some very simple like i just ask you to prove that let's say a cube and b square i ask you to prove this right now then this is very very simple right because you can say okay just do this right and then we know that a is bigger than b but then b is bigger than this so done. Obviously, when B is more than one or A is more than three, so it's fine. So this is very simple, just taking this. But in this case, how do we do? Let's just think. Okay, sure. Let's try then. So to the power A, then we get this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but B is less than A. That's the twist, right? Uh, that is the... <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, yes, A, but A is bigger but B is getting multiplied more times. Okay, so that's that's what you're saying is kind of an intuition maybe, right? So maybe let me create a separate column, separate place here where you, we can write some explanations, not proof, but maybe explanations. Because these explanations are the kind of thing that one usually uses to come up with these inequalities, right? Explanations. So what you just said is a kind of explanation, but, but, but we can actually make it a little more precise right that you see on the if you just look at a less than b and right? then b b uh, so this is not true obviously i mean that um, um yeah what you said is i think good explanation that even though b is lesser it's getting multiplied more times with itself uh, and the more one is yeah so basically the intuition maybe can be that the effect of powering is drastically more than the effect of, you know, uh, changing the base. Yeah, can can it, yeah, something like that, right? And that can be made very precise also uh, by taking a minus b difference, and you can say. But let's not go into that. But roughly speaking, that's what it is because, yeah, effect of powering is much more. I mean, suppose there are four options, and you can clearly say. I mean, but you can say that with these examples also. Effect of powering is much more. I mean, this intuition is very important for a lot of questions of factorials and so on. We call powering this more. Because both sides, the effect is kind of similar in the sense that A is getting increased by a certain amount to B and, uh, sorry, A is decreasing by a certain amount to B and this B is increasing by a certain amount to A. So the effect is same, but one is happening in the power and one is happening in the base. So the power one, wins in which the power there is an increase but that's not a proof how do we prove it that is the question so here is an it's a slightly new technique maybe which you may not have encountered but you see the initially you can see that both the sides are very different both sides are in some sense they are very different so to make them similar to each other, we will do a certain step, a 
okay and that is we will divide both the sides the power of both will raise both sides to the power 1 by ab and you can immediately see why i'm doing this both sides become of a similar similar nature both sides now start to have similar nature the truth has not changed right this is true if and only if this is true so i have not changed any truth but maybe it's easier to and this is the same as this is obviously the same thing as 1 by a less than this is the difference between this it is the same problem the problem has not changed but now the quantities involved are of a similar nature so this we this concept or rather maybe i can say before that is it's like same thing is happening to like what is happening to a on left side is same thing is happening to b on right side so what is happening we can abstract that and call and that's what we call a function so i can write this okay one minute so basically let me first summarize what we have to do so we want to now prove that a to the power a is less than a to the power 1 by a is less than b to the power 1 by b if a is bigger than b is bigger than 3 let me remove these manipulation steps but this step is very very useful if you do it in a lot in a lot of problem we do manipulation so that both sides or whatever pieces become of a similar nature So then, let's come to this problem and try to explain it. Remove this example. So this is this is the same question. So what is happening to a can be said as a function, right? What we can say is that. A is an input, and the output is a to the power one by a. Okay, and this is what we call f. We just say f in as a function. Okay, it's just a machine where a is going as input and output is. Okay, so f of a is a to the power one. This is just a notation. Okay, a is going inside this input, and output is a to the power one by a. How will this help? let's see so any ideas how this can help or if you're looking at this function so you see it's kind of saying that as a increases a to the power 1 by a decreases right exactly right? and if you want to say it in a more simple way maybe you could say that these numbers are decreasing is a decreasing sequence okay as the input is increasing this is decreasing now we have not proved anything but we are just changing the form of the question and just interpreting it in you know different way so if you just want to show that this is a decreasing sequence now before we go into the proof you can just see this graphically also now here at this point you could just use maybe you have not learned to graph i don't think you have learned to graph functions but what i'm saying is that if you just see it like this here is the thing and this is where you put the input and this is where you put the output okay then if you travel here and for every x if you send the output as x to the power 1 by x the height okay so this is x to the power 1 by x 
then if you draw this or if you use a calculator to draw it or some online tool you will see that after three or after a certain number actually which is roughly 2.7 after that point this function actually starts decreasing and it actually goes closer and closer to one this is the number one I mean, you agree that this will always be more than one, right? Any n to the power one by n is always more than one, never becomes less than one, but it will go closer and closer to one. You could see this graphically, but yeah, but to prove it, uh, we will need calculus. So we don't, we don't do this approach now, okay. but this is the way of functions. This is the way these things are proved or harder things are proved using calculus, okay. but some of them are not good. If there are more variables then calculus is not good. But yeah, we will, we will say the philosophy of that and the methods when we do calculus. Now you can focus on this question maybe, how to show that this sequence is a decreasing one. You can check for us, you can check for small numbers definitely, you know that this is true, this is true, maybe till you can check some numbers. Now you see this, this is actually in some sense a simpler question, right? Because you see, this is like some two arbitrary natural numbers, right? A and B are two arbitrary natural numbers. You could have like 100 to the power one by 100 and this one B, B could be, I don't know, 95, okay? So these two are a little apart, okay? But what we now need to just show is that this is the decreasing sequence. It will be enough, right? Because all you need to show here is that, show that n to the power one by n is, is bigger than n plus one to the power one by n plus one. This is a slightly simpler version of the statement, which will actually imply it, the statement, right? This will be, if you prove this, then it's enough, right? Because you can build on it, n plus two, n plus three. So it becomes a simpler problem. So it's like we have kind of, said that this is a plus one in some sense okay? which initially it was not clear that we that idea was not there because there were two different quantities but once you bring them down in the same and uh, make them look like the same thing similar thing then you can do these things yeah so basically the task now reduces to showing this now we can we think let's see Think of this. That is an that is an explanation, right? Yeah. Right. But but will that qualify as a proof? No, right? yeah, but it is. It's like you. It's like we know it is true. Right? It's like we are very, very sure. But we are not able to make it follow from the rules of maths. That's what we need to do. But it's good that we can at least like we can we are sure that this is true. So that's a good thing. <clears throat> you see how a problem between two arbitrary numbers is reduced to an increasing decreasing problem and then that is kind of same as proving the same problem but only for two consecutive things and these kind of uh, features you will see uh, in many places if you look closely So while you think, I will just maybe write another form of this. This is the same question as this. Maybe this can bring new ideas. The same question.
and and when we write it like this it becomes even more simple to explain yeah that the power the basis is increasing by one and this is the power is decreasing by one so this will certainly decrease it becomes even more clear but how to prove this Yeah, now this is something which maybe yeah you may have not um, thought of this. You may not think of this. So let me try to take one more step from here. Uh, okay, now let me first think. <laughs> there are two ways I can think. Uh, which one will work? Let let's try it. So there are two ways which I can think from here. One is again based on the manipulation. that we have done and the other is expansion so we will see that they basically multiplying it out and trying to just trying to multiply it out without focusing on all the details and the other is again further manipulation dividing and so on so if i think of this left one then the manipulation that suggests to me is we can do we can do this and this this does that bring any ideas let's see so i will remove this things now because now we know what we are doing and while you can think Hmm. Okay. Okay. Can we take the nth root of both of them? Yes, we can surely do that. Uh, but or which one do you want to take? Or, or do you want to take the nth root here? Ah. Okay. 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 So that that maybe is a bad, can be a good step. Yeah. If we take the nth root of let then we get. but is this obvious this is not very obvious right this, uh, yeah is it doesn't become more obvious maybe yeah maybe becomes more obscure yeah so i don't know if this will help yeah even this is equally equally hard as seems say, as your original problem hmm. have you have you seen this number before have you seen this expression before no okay okay yeah so you will learn maybe soon that this number as again this is another way to prove it um, but we will do it in a way that is completely simple but again i'm just showing you the connections this as n becomes bigger and bigger this number sorry not this number is probably the single most important limit that is used okay in uh, limit the usual limit questions this number actually tends to a number i mean it tends to something which we call we give it the status of a number and then the this is the number e and the number e you would have seen right on calculus this is the definition of the number e 
okay, that you take the sequence, I mean, this is a sequence as n changes, and you see where it goes. Okay, so that place is just called E. You can think of it like that. Okay? And it goes to something like 2.73 and so on. But yeah, that is not very helpful for us to truly prove this, but this is just a result. So now we have full uh, incentive to understand these things and to study functions and so on. But so how can we prove this? Is there a is there a simple explanation that can be used? Let's pause this a little bit and let's go to the other way. Maybe the other way can can help, right? By the expansion way. You see, the other way is like uh, there is n to the power n plus one. I don't know, I'm running out of ideas today. And then this is n plus one to the power n. If we if we look at this more closely, or I mean, if we just write it out, sorry, we just write it out. Okay. Then if you expand it, then you will surely get n to the power n, right? As one term, if you multiply this out, right? Will you get terms like n to the power n minus one? And if so, then in what way? So remember, this is just n times. So just think, how can you get a term like n to the power n minus one in this? When you're expanding. So when you're multiplying, it's just like you're going to choose. You're going to choose one term out of these two from the first bracket. And then you're going to choose something from this and so on. And then you just club them together. So what sequence of choices will give you n to the power n minus one? Will there be? Surely, right? If you pick, let's say, from the first n minus one brackets, you pick n, and from the last bracket, you pick one. You see, that's how multiplication happens, right? We pick one from each, and we collect it, right? So, so how many times will n to the power n minus one happen? So you know how it happens, right? From all but one of them, you pick n. Except for one, you, from all of them, you pick n. How many ways can you do that? So, so this is first bracket, second bracket. Sorry, <laughs> this is the nth. Right. So from first n minus one, you can pick n and from the, so let's, let's see, let's see this question mark, okay? How many times can this come, right? How many ways to get n to the power n minus one? Yeah. So from, uh, from bracket one, two till n minus one, pick n last from the last I should say from the last pick one this is one way how many other ways like this will be there see first bracket second bracket nth bracket Yeah. 
think. Uh, why factorial? No, shouldn't it only be n? Or why do you think it's n factorial? Ah. Okay. Maybe if you do it like this five times, then it will be more clear. Or let's say four times. Then how many how many times do you pick n? How many times do you get n cube when you do the product? So you can try to do it for this uh, n plus one multiplied four times first. And how many ways can you get n cube? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Why are there four ways? No, you have to always pick three n's if you want to get n cube. So how many ways can you get n cube? Yeah, you have to pick three n's, but how many ways are there to pick it? See, there are four brackets and you have to pick three n's. So it should be picking three things from four things, right? Number of ways you can do that. Ah, right. So this is first, second, third, and then fourth. So, four choose three, absolutely, yeah, exactly, four choose three. So just from the four, you have to pick n three, if you just pick three brackets. And remember, all the brackets are distinct, it really matters, right? Second one is second and third one is third, because you will get the product in different ways, right? I mean, you consider always when you write a product. Absolutely. So in the same way, this will be n choose, I mean, you can think of it in that complicated way, but you can also think of it in a simple, in a complementary simple way. In the sense that, from if you just pick a one from the remaining bracket, right? So, <laughs> how many ways are there to pick one? Just n ways, and that's you can write it at n two. You can write it as n choose one also, but it's just n. You see the complementary way, right? That to pick. Uh, n from three brackets, that's the same as picking one from one bracket, right? right? So now you can think, what should be for n to the power n minus two? What should be the core? I mean, what we are doing is not a trivial thing, but we are, you are actually deriving the, the binomial theorem. Okay? So yeah, that's a topic which uh, will be there in the next class for you. But it's just a simple counting thing, as you can see. Let's try to think of this. What should be the, the this is called the coefficient of n to the power n minus two? How many ways can this come? Or here you can also think n cube if that is more easier first.
exactly this will be four choose two exactly right and so this will be n choose two this one is a little confusing in the sense that the power and the base are like related here right both are n but you understand it will be n choose two because just pick two ones now and the rest you can pick n choose two right so that's very good and then you understand it just goes on like this n to the power n minus k would be n choose k and finally it will die out and just figure out one you can get on only in only one way so that's just one right right good 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 so is it clear then that this number n to the power m plus one to the power n by using combinatorics you can write it in this way right that's an interesting application of cock because otherwise it's hard to represent what this is but using counting I mean, we have not done anything. We just multiplied it out, but we have a language of counting which helps you to write it, which helps you to make sense of it. That's all. Now you see. Now it's very clear how to make this because we want to make this less than n to the power n plus one, right? And that's our goal. Okay, so let me write it uh, clearly. So we can pick this approach. Uh, this other approach later, we can think about that later. So, so the goal is to show that n to the power n plus one is bigger than this. I have to give some reasoning. Okay, so just let's let's reason on every term and try to see what that is less than. If you look at n choose one times n to the power n plus one, can I say that this is less than or equal to n to the power n? It is equal to n to the power n, right? So that is simple. And then if I do n choose two times this, can you say something similar? What is this less than? Can I say that this is less than n to the power n? Let's think about this. This is a question. You can use the you can use the the algebra version of this. That is, it is this. We know this as well. Well, now it's now it should be now it's absolutely clear, right? That this is obviously less than n to the power n, because this is less than n, and that's further two. So you see, now it becomes simple. With the same thing, with the same thing, you can show that basically you have to show that this is less than n to the power k, which you know, which you can do by the same way, and then when you multiply this by n to the power n minus k, then this is going to get adjusted and you get into the power n. Okay, this is something that you can do in the same way by using the algebra of the this combinatorial quantity. Okay. So we started with algebra is kind of a you know, algebraic thing. Or I mean, we started with numerical initially, but then now it's like algebraic because you're doing it for general numbers. But then we use combinatorics as a bridge in between and then we are going back to algebra to or the, the formula, I should say, of the number n. Really? <clears throat> so now, now you think, how can we finish off this proof from here? Each term in the expansion is less than n to the power n is what we have shown. Maybe you can remove that. So we know that each of this is less than n to the power n. Each of these, and obviously one in the end will also be. Everything is less than n to the power less than or equal to. First two are equal. N. No, uh, but but there are n of them. 
right? There are, there are, how many of them are there here? You have to, you have to see that, right? So now, what, what I'm saying is, if you have n to the power n, that is equal to n to the power n, then when you have n choose one times n to the power n minus one, that's also equal to n to the power n. Then you have the next term that's less than n to the power n. And similarly, n choose k, that's also less than n to the power n, right? So all these are less than n to the power n. So how can we combine them? And we can just, you can forget about the one in the end. That's just a one, that's not a problem. How many terms are here? N terms, right? I mean, there are N plus one terms, but you can, if, if you ignore the one, then there are N terms, right? And each of those N terms, so is less than N to the power N. Right? So uh, can we not say that then this quantity that we had, dot, 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 this quantity here, this is less than this. Yeah, and this is just what n to the power n plus one means. Oh, uh, no, yeah, exactly, right? That's what it means. It's, it's just n times n to the power n. That's basically what we have shown, okay. So more or less we are done. And just this, this extra one, but it's not a problem because I mean, this is not n to the power n, it is more than one less than that. Right. Yeah. So you can that gets adjusted. Okay. So I think this was a good application of combinatorics and so on. And the, some small, small ideas we combine. Now this one problem as a directly is hard to do, maybe at this at this point. But the ideas in between and what the new things we learn, combining them we can do. Okay. So when we do the binomial theorem more fully, then you will see. I mean, the basic idea now you already have, but you will see it. Okay. So now let's go to the next, this other uh, other approach and see what new thing we can pick up from there or get inspiration to study for. Yeah. So basically our question is to prove this, right? Uh, maybe I can just write it again. Yeah. So we just want to show we just want to show that n is bigger than. Now this is the same question. So in some sense, you have already done this, okay? But we want to see this in a different way. You know, if I are using a completely different approach, okay? And that is basically the idea. The main idea behind what we will be doing is again a new idea, maybe. So the idea is that <clears throat> build on smaller cases. This is formally, there's a lot of formalism that has to be done to make it completely rigorous. It's called induction, mathematical induction. Okay. Build on smaller cases. And this is what is called induction, mathematical induction. Okay. But we don't need to go into the formalism now. We will not. We we'll just get the idea first. And later on, we can see. So, what does it mean to build on smaller cases? Well, you see, this is the kind of result that you already know is true for small cases. So you see, the thing is that certainly, so if you call this star, certainly star is true for small cases. Okay. What we will be doing is we will say, Assume it is true for some k. Let's assume it. Assume that star is true for some k. That is, what does that mean? It just means I'm saying that k is bigger than 1 plus 1 by k to the power k. 
I introduced a new K just so that there is a different notation so that there is no confusion. I am assuming it is true for some K. It is not such an absurd assumption because you have already know it for small cases. So we already know for small cases is important. Now, if I can show k plus one is bigger than one by k plus one to the power k, then what will that mean? Under this, uh, under this assumption, if I can show that the last thing is also true, meaning I should be k plus one here, then what would that mean if I can do it? Then you see, then intuitively, it would mean that I have proof for every number. It's like dominoes falling. That's the analogy that's usually used. You know it for small cases, and then you prove this extra thing. This is a very, this is a new kind of thing that one does, right? Assuming is true for some K, that K, we're not assuming anything particular about that K, we're just assuming that it is true for some K, any K, but it's true for it. The statement is true for that. Then you show that it's true for the next one. So you have a leverage point to start with. Then we, our understanding of natural numbers tell us that then it will imply that we have proof for all natural numbers. Our understanding of natural number tells us that whether it will follow from the rules of the natural numbers, we do not know, but we don't understand natural numbers at the level of rules so much. Right? We just understand some basics and some intuition and how to you know, just uh, verify things and so on. So it's fine at that level, this statement is completely okay. And we will assume it. So this will imply, then we are done. So that is the route we will take. And this is a very powerful method. Okay? And it may feel like it's a little bit of cheating, but in some sense it is not, if you really think, right? Because I'm not assuming anything specific about this K. So I will really, I will really be proving it for all K. Okay? As you do more on this topic, you will see that this is actually not just uh, doesn't just help us to prove things, but actually helps us to understand the nature in which the thing grows. But those things you, you will see as, and then you can abstract it later on. But we are not done, we have to do. So we will assume this is true and we'll try to prove this. So now you have a thing that you can assume. So you can assume this from here. Can you go here? Let's see. Maybe it is still not very easy. I don't know. But at least now we have something to start with. So can we basically, can we do some manipulations on this to bring it to this form, to bring K plus one somehow? There are many ways to do it. How would you do it to think?
Mm. That's right. So this implies Yes, but this is not a good use of it, right? We are becoming less, we're giving away more, right? We're giving away more things like this doesn't give anything new. Like the inequality just become, becomes loser. Yeah. So, but you can also say this also. That is, you can say, right? Whether it, will, whether it will help, I don't know. You can say this. So you see, but yeah, this these are the kind of things that we have to do. We have to somehow take this and bring in K plus one, but in a way that makes the life makes life easier. So one one remark that you can make from here is now that you know that K plus one is bigger than this, it will be enough. And this is a point that we have seen earlier. Right? It will be enough, though it may not be true but it will be enough to show that the right hand side is bigger but is that an easier problem i don't know just just a new possibility it will be enough to show this sometimes this works in this problem i don't know This may not be true, but it's enough to prove this. So, so what is the other way? What could be the other way to bring this one closer to this? Now, this one doesn't look easier to prove and it's in fact not true. You can check for small case. I think this is not true. Okay. So just removing it for now. See, now the thing is that we can try the other, we can try some other ways. You added both sides at one way. Now there's only one other way, right? And that is multiplying by one plus one by K. Maybe a slightly less obvious one, but it does do the thing. Brings it closer. And we don't know if it's, yeah, but it does bring it closer. Now, now maybe this can give new ideas because it also brings the K plus one on this side. In a different way.
should be less than sorry less than what no i have only multiplied both sides by so in this so in this equation i have multiplied both sides by 1 plus 1 by k So then is it not true? Okay. Like, like you added one to both sides, kind of, right? And I'm doing just multiplying both sides of one plus one to the power k. So just see if that is correct. So is it okay that it is less, it is bigger than actually? Yeah, okay. No, uh, no, no, by, no, 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 I don't mean, I don't mean by taking examples. Yes, no, no, but that's again a rough explanation. But here, what we are doing is see, here I'm saying that if I assume this, then can I say this? Yes. That's what I'm saying, right? Like, see, like, um, see, the goal is that from this assumption, we want to prove this, right? Currently, that's the technique we are looking at, right? Because as we have discussed, this will imply that it will, it will be true for the statement, this initial statement will be true for every n. Is that right? Yeah. If you can, if you can sh say that by assuming for any k, you can prove for the next one, and you know that it is true for small ones, then it's true for all, right? And that is based on that philosophy we are trying this, right? That you assume this and then you prove this. So with that goal in mind, when we look at this, we try to bring it closer to this, what we want to prove by some manipulation. Now there are several manipulations that one can do from here. So I'm just slightly repeating this point. Okay? Because you won't, you, don't, you won't know exactly how to get here. But you can at, but what we do usually do is we try to algebraically we guide ourselves and we so one way is to obviously just add a one. Okay, we can add a one. So this comes this. Yeah. Now we would want to show that this is bigger than this. Right? Because yeah, is that okay? We know that this is true because we just added a one to something we know is true, we assumed is true then you would like to show that this is bigger than this, but that is not easy to show. It doesn't look, or maybe it's not even correct. The next one I do is I multiply both sides by one plus one, right? Is that right? That is the other thing, right? Yeah, just to bring the right-hand side similar to the right-hand side of what we need to prove, you see. We get this. Yeah. So this is certainly true. Means this is certainly follows from our assumption. 
yeah from the case we assume so we have the basic idea is simple you want to prove, assume a case and you want to show it then the next one is also true now this so this we can assume now can you use this to prove the actual thing to prove this that k plus one is bigger then one plus one by k plus one to the power k plus one. So again, we assume this because we it follows from one of our assumptions. Can we use this to move forward? So you see, this is the A, if you call this A just saying, this is A, this is B, and this is C, right? So you know A is bigger than B. You want, A, you want to show A is bigger than C, right? So you would just want to show that B is bigger than C, right? I mean, if you could do that, then that's good enough. Is that, yeah, is that, is that good idea? Yeah. And that's the idea that we use all the time, right? We just, this is the intermediate. Okay, now I want to show this is bigger than that. But this is, but this is completely, but this you will see is, is obvious. Because K plus one is less, is bigger. So one by K is bigger than one by K plus one. And the power is same and everything is same. Okay. So is this is this method okay? This is a new technique, but it is a little powerful. It's, it does the problem in a different way than usual. Okay. 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 So that is uh, that is thing. Now you now there are a lot of questions that you can practice on this. So maybe you can. Uh, I will I'll send you some questions. Okay. Uh, or maybe I'll send you some reference where there will be questions, right? Because you practice some regular questions. Right? So basically today we saw in summary, just two minutes to summarize. So we had this one central problem. We wanted to show that a to the power b is less than b to the power a when a is bigger than b is bigger than. Okay. So where all did we go? Can you? Can you summarize? Can you try to summarize? Can what all? What are the new things we learned and previous things we used, and so on? Yeah. So this was we functional. We came to functions. Right. Okay. Ah, so we also saw the intuitive explanation. That is important because to frame other questions and to make your own conjecture or to at least know if something is true to begin with, we had this intuitive explanations. That power is more powerful than base when things are bigger than one. Right, and then, then, then we saw two methods and how it can be true and then, uh, right, exactly. We, so we kind of we kind of brought it in terms of sequences, right? And then we went down expansions, right? We kind of expanded using combinatorics. So that's the binomial theorem. We saw a small version of that, right? From there, there was one way. And the other that we saw roughly was induction, right? And this is like, assume the small case. And so assume, again, we did some manipulation and then from small case, so this was just induction. So yeah, all, how, how all these topics are connected, right? So you will certainly see then that this, seeing something in terms of functions, or seeing an inequality and trying to write it in terms of a function of something 
or a sum of functions of right something can be a good approach right because a function is kind of what gives us like a is like an automatic weapon then rather than a manual one right it kind of yeah you see it's it's a, it's a very powerful thing because so much work has been done on this so if you can use them as you learn more calculus use is basically a way to manipulate functions right? and say things about them in certain ways so this is one thing that now one can go and study and then obviously this will keep building as you do more questions and then this came out in terms of sequences and then this induction method is a very powerful method and then this using combinatorial expand so all these topics now you can you can visit one by one if you want this and then obviously there are other ways where you can graph from here and do calculus and prove it the same thing but there is another way which we have not seen maybe if one can give a purely combinatorial explanation and that's i think a more challenging one which we have not seen and i don't know how to do it okay? i mean in the sense that i have not i thought about a little bit i couldn't do okay? so what i'm thinking what i'm saying is that this is what we want to prove right now the question is can you think of two combinatorial problems okay so can you think of a problem a problem one so just last one minute and a problem two can you think of two problems such that because they are problems are real or whatever some counting questions you will the so that the description of the problems tell you that problem 1 has bigger answer than problem 2 you don't know the answers let's say for a second but just by the description you can say that problem 1 has more choices or more options okay can you come up with two problems where you can say this obviously such that or maybe i should say that can you come up with problem 1 whose answer is the left hand side and a problem 2 whose answer is the right hand side okay and by the very nature of the problem you could say by you know that situation by that basically decorating these numbers using that problem so that the you could say that problem 1 has bigger answer than problem 2 just by the nature of the problems then we would have proved this in a in a very different way without doing any just by using the fact that this is n multiplied n plus 1 times and this is n plus 1 multiplied without any expansion or anything and that's a much more challenging task okay which uh, yeah you can think, okay you can think but yeah we will see if once we have, once we are there we can try to understand it okay so that was for today okay um yeah okay then thank you thank you